I'm Dr. Alan Jameson. I'm a senior lecturer in marine biology in Newcastle University, England. Uh, also recently chief scientist of the Five Deeps expedition and our research focuses on the exploration, technology and biology of the deepest places in the world. So we went around the Pacific, the six deepest places in the Pacific and analysed those for plastics. And I was sceptical, I must admit, I had my student do it and I said, yeah, it's, it's a good student project, but you know, we'll see. Finding a new species that we didn't know was there before and finding plastic in it just shows um, how widespread this is as a pollutant. We found one microfiber in a specimen from 6,900 meters, um, and that microfiber was 80% similar to PET. PET is used in to make water bottles. It's one of the top five uh, plastic pollutants out there. To give it a name, we would normally look at something which is quite characteristic of that species. Because once that species is named and it's now deposited in a museum, it is now part of the human catalogue of species. It's, it's there forevermore. We're going to call this Amphipod Eurythenes plasticus because sadly that's one of the most conspicuous things we've found on this species and I think we need to get that down in the taxonomic record. Uh, and we're just making a statement to say that we're now at the point where we're looking at a new species from an unexplored habitat and it's already contaminated with plastic. The issue is, is lots of these other contaminants in, in the sea which are called persistent organic pollutants or POPs and they're hydrophobic which means they don't like water. So they end up in the sea but they want to bind to anything else which is in the sea in particular plastics. Plastics are known to be almost like a magnet to these things. So what happens then if you've got plastic in the sea, it collects all these contaminants and it ends up sinking. Deep sea animal eats it. Those contaminants leach into the animal and we know that these contaminants will reduce reproductive success. Everything at the bottom of the sea is relying on food, or organic matter coming down from the surface. As much as we don't like to think about it, you know, all animals in the sea will die. Dolphins will die, squid die, fish die, jellyfish die, and they sink to the bottom. And it's that sinking of material that feeds the deep sea. Deep sea animals have an amazing ability to eat just about anything, right? So that's almost our downfall in that a lot of, certainly the midwater animals have evolved lots and lots of different adaptations to make sure on that rare occasion where a bit of food comes, it'll get it. The problem is, Plastic hasn't been around long enough for them to have evolved a detection strategy that said, oh, wait a minute, that's a bottle top. Der Vorteil von Plastik ist ja, dass es langlebig ist oder das war mal der Grund, warum äh, so viele Produkte aus Plastik hergestellt werden. Aber es ist nun natürlich leider auch genau Teil des Problems. Wenn Plastik in die Umwelt gelangt, dann zerfällt es eben nicht. Es ist nicht wie, ähm, wie andere organische Stoffe, sondern die leben sehr lange. Und zum Beispiel so ein Zigarettenfilter kann bis zu sieben Jahre dauern, bis der anfängt sich abzubauen. So dünne Plastiktüten, 20 Jahre. Und das kann hochgehen bis zu 400 Jahren. When it starts to break down, for every time it gets smaller and smaller, it gets into a higher percentage of, of animals. And then eventually breaks down into microplastics, which is something you can't just take out the sea. Once it gets to deep sea, there's nowhere else for it to go, so it's only ever going to accumulate. Over the years, more and more plastic started, has generally started to turn up, and we've never really looked into that too much until about three or four years ago. And lo and behold, we found that the bottom of the Mariana Trench was 15 times greater contaminated than some of the rivers in China. And this is stuff that's been banned since the 70s. Die Plastikflut macht ja nicht Halt an, an Grenzen, sondern die Vermüllung der Meere oder der Eintrag von Plastik in die Umwelt ist tatsächlich ein globales Problem. Und deshalb brauchen wir auch globale Lösungen für das Problem. What I think the new name does is really speak that plastic pollution is everywhere. Um, and it also gives it a real name um, to people that they can connect, like the actions that I'm doing on land can impact um, this animal that's living 6,000 meters below sea level. 
Darum hat der WWF zu einer äh, Unterschriftenaktion eingeladen, dass die Menschen sich mit uns zusammen dafür einsetzen können, dass wir auf Ebene der Vereinten Nationen ein neues Abkommen bekommen, dass eben kein Plastik mehr in den Meeren landet. Und wir hoffen damit einfach noch mal ein starkes Signal an die Politik zu senden, sich wirklich zu kümmern und zwar global zu kümmern, dieses Problem abzuschaffen und das nicht in zehn Jahren, sondern jetzt.